Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Say Tell 2020. I'm your host, Moltar, and I'm all alone today. All alone. Every no, we're not going to sing that. I'm sorry. But today is Phoenix Task Force taking on Golden Crown in a pretty interesting matchup because I think Golden Crown is flying diamond with all Tomcats. That's right. All kitties. Now, will the cats get neutered or are they going to be the predators that we all know the cats can be? I don't know, but let's check out the Super Cup. Thrustmaster Super Cup by Alpha Whiskey coming at you. Oh no, I forgot to rename things. But welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here. Uh, I think this is going to be something like a Napa versus Mazdoc, I think is what it is. And of course, Moltar goes and forgets something important. And now I have completely screwed up the other stuff. Because, you know, what would, what would a Moltar stream be without royally screwing something up? It wouldn't be anything. Pause. Pause. So I got to catch these cameras up and then I got to rename stuff. But how are you guys doing this weekend? Or not this weekend. How was your weekend? Mine was great. Uh, well, catching up on things. I don't know how, how great it was. It's decently good. Nothing really exciting. Still don't have blinds on my house so people can see directly into our windows and our main floor. So that's always fun. But anybody do anything interesting? Anybody? Anyone at all? Let me know what you did. I'm also doing, I'm paying for emotes today. So I need suggestions. We got a bunch of slots. I need suggestions on what emotes you guys think would be solid, solid choices. So let me know. I'm serious. Like what emotes would be good, good for this? I need, I need suggestions like telephone pole, uh, face smile, but how would you do those? Right? So if you have a suggestion, shoot me a message on Discord or a private message here or at me here. Um, and let me know because it's something that I need to. I'm buying today. I'm getting five made today to see how they go. So I need suggestions. They need to happen. What do you guys think? What would you guys do? That's not right. Something got messed up. This shouldn't be anything. That should be that. And then... This one. Okay, so let's check the cameras. Not right. Not right. Okay, so this one needs to be that. And then this one, I think, needs to be this. Sorry, I'm talking to myself trying to get these cameras in order. Running four cameras of DCS is uh, it's not all it's cracked up to be. There's that. There's that. That one's right. Man, that one's right. Hey, we fixed it. Okay, so let's get this underway. Let's push play. Here we go. 
Again, this is Golden Crown taking on Phoenix Task Force. I think this is, this is actually Novo versus Mazdoc, not a Napa versus Mazdoc, but Novo versus Mazdoc. GC, if we take a look at them, are in all Tomcats. All of them are in F-14s, and they are being represented by Rhino, Fuji, Gunslinger, Dave, Challenger, and Grippen. We can take a look at them from the top, and then if we look over at Phoenix Task Force, Phoenix Task Force is rocking four 16s, an Eagle, and a 14. I think that's an Eagle, an Eagle, and a 14, and they are being represented by Shark, Falcon, Predator, Ali, Black Arrow, and Sheik are who is flying for them. So all 14s versus predominantly 16s. Lots of 14s, lots of telephone poles in today's matchup. My bet is somebody's going to get hit by a Phoenix and go but go down in a ball of flame. I, I, I'm just, just predicting that. Just, just saying. You know, I, I think that's what's going to happen. That's got a high priority with uh, how many Phoenixes? Four times six. So 24, right? That's a lot of Phoenixes. Quick shout out to Dagwood, Gordo, Symphony, and Gordo again for the subs. Gordo gave a community sub, but thank you. Gordo says, Happy New Year, say, Tal. Man, I kind of like 2020. I mean, not the people dying, but I like the, the progress that 2020 made. My wife is able to work from home now. I think there was a lot, like she was able to call the doctor and do a televisit. So I think there were some good things to come out of 2020. People dying in COVID wasn't good, but you know, got to make the best of it. Hopefully 2021 is better. Uh, Phoenix Task Force looks like they are rolling out. Most of these guys are taking off. We're going to turn up the game volume here a schmidgen because I think it's been too quiet. But these guys are taking off. Golden Crown has yet to move. They are not moving. At all. What is match start, they would say. Great attitude? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Siegel says this game was during weird Phoenix API. Yes, it was. Wartime promotes progress. I guess a pandemic is the same. That's a good point. Yeah, I think, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, I can't think of the word. Damn brain injury. It's, it's there. Having a hard time, I think, adversity. I think promotes change and progress. However that adversity comes at you, whether it be war, whether it be a pandemic, whether it be, you know, racial stuff, whether it be sex stuff, whether whatever. You know, I think adversity promotes progress because you have to change in order to to get past things. At least that's a, that's how I'm looking at this stuff. So um, hopefully 2021 the progress continues. I know there was a lot of polarization, especially along the political lines. We won't get into that. But there was a lot of crap in 2020, but hopefully it's hopefully we move on and things are on the, the right track. We're on the up and up. People can stop dying. Just, that's no good. Vaccines are good, though. Happy about that. Just more people need to take them. Here we go. Gunslinger rolling out, followed by Fuji. And Rhino is going to be the last one to take off for Golden Crown. And he is now rolling. Let's just follow him out. you guys have predictions on how today's match is going to go? I think, like I said earlier, people are going to die from Tomcats. Why has betting not been happening? Uh, I don't run betting. That has always been the job or done by the moderators, and I haven't seen any of my moderators. I think they all died. Which actually isn't funny because they actually could have died, so I need to watch what I say. Oops. 
So I guess Silver Phoenix says yes. Just last week, Phoenix Task Force, their gold team was in all 14. So I guess their their F all F14 thing isn't just in gold; it's in diamond too, which is interesting. It Mad Fusion in Diamond League, you are forced to have a human Rio. Gold League, you can ha you can use Jester, but Diamond League, you have to use a human Rio. It's a requirement. Tis a requirement. These guys are ingressing now, just riding along with some of these boys. So Symphony, this is your first time here? And you already dropped a prime sub? I'm flattered. Is telemetry working? No, because Moltar sucks at life. I suck. I keep forgetting. Attack view, yeah, attack view's not working. Somebody remind me after the stream to get that fixed. I think my router, because I redid my entire home network that we moved. Uh, I think I've just forgotten to open the port for real-time telemetry. It's just been a failure on my part. Oh, so Symphony's been here. Just first time all f 14 I got you. I got you. That makes sense. I'm following what you're putting down. I'm hearing you. Nonstop 54 should definitely be an interesting thing to watch. It will definitely be interesting. Lots of telephone poles. Lots of lo large objects moving through the air. I mean, if you're an F-16 pilot, how does it make you feel to know that another aircraft is launching a missile that is like half the length of your plane? and it's coming at your face. How does that make you feel? Pretty confident if you're F-14 driver, but as a, as a 16 driver, I don't know. Well, yeah, the F-54 the isn't too hard to notch if you can get below the missile, but, excuse me, if it comes out of nowhere and you're caught, as we say, with your pants down, around your ankles and you're up too high well you in for a you in for a problem big problem so it's all about launching the missile at the correct time to try and catch the guys trying to they're waddling with their pants around their ankles they can't they can't run fast enough or maneuver well enough to be able to get away from the missile because their pants are on their ankles their belts getting in the way That's why you use DCS Godzu. True. This is true. The field of view Godzu in DCS is is very very good. Pants down. It is a solid emoji. Probably do that one. I got that one. I got a telephone pole that is going to look like a missile. Um, face smile. I don't know what to do with face smile. You know what? What should I do there? Gordo B needs his own emote. Dorito, maybe. The Bugle. This is a long ingress. How far is this? This is... Uh, where's my mouse? Okay, so this ingress is Novo versus Mazda. This is a long-ass way. 300 miles between these air bases. 300 miles. So this is one of the longer missions that these guys can partake in. There is no AWACS. I want to say that again. There is no AWACS. So this is all going to be up to the pilots and their ability to scan. And there is a lot of sky to scan with this distance. I mean, the team's so it's only a big circle, over 100 miles across, nautical miles across. It's a lot of, a lot of sky. I think the, the F-16 is gonna have the better SA over the 14. 14's got the longer stick.
Well, the 16 has PPLI. So don't discount the 16 there, Silver Phoenix. The 16 has PPLI for sure. And the 16 actually can go a long way. People just fly it wrong. They put their power up too high and they go through all their fuel really fast because it that thing drinks fuel, right? But that thing can – she's got some endurance if you do it right. She's got a lot of endurance if you do it right. Like you can fly from Sochi to – Excuse me, Tbilisi, no problem on virtually no fuel. So I think both of these these aircraft are going to be pretty equally paired for endurance in this matchup. I'm not worried about that. I'm a little concerned about... Get a different view here. I'm a little concerned about... Weapon ordinance for Phoenix Task Force. They don't have the weapons that Golden Crown is going to be carrying. The 16s, so they have four of them, can only carry six missiles apiece. The Tomcats are going to be carrying eight missiles apiece. So they're going to be down eight missiles at least. Silver Phoenix, no. This match actually took place October 24th. So this is a while ago. This is two months ago. We won't be seeing any of the new changes for missile APIs or anything like that for a substantial time until we get caught back up. Now, I'm going to be trying to do a stream Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to try and get caught back up, but it's just going to be a little bit until we can get back to where we, we were post-Multar not having internet. Uh, .NET, why is there such a long time? Because I didn't have internet for a month and a half, so there was a long lag of no matches so things got pushed back quite a ways uh, and we're trying to get caught back up at this point hero there's no betting right now I don't know where my moderators went they all they all gave up on life they're all gone all gone Yeah, dot net, no problem, no problem. Glad you were curious. Obviously, all of these matches are gonna be, uh, what am I thinking? Delayed, because they're all flown in real time between the teams, but I stream them delayed because that way we don't have to worry about, um, we don't have to worry about screen sniping or anything like that. This just removes all of that and it allows me to stream at my own leisure. Oh, betting is on. Okay, Jaster's got it. So betting is on. Savior, you uh, you missed it all. The match is over. They're RTB. I'm just kidding. You haven't missed anything. Do I run Sato or just cast? I do. I do both. That's it. Do the whole shebang in my parents' basement. Just kidding. I don't live with my parents. I live in my wife's basement. <laughs> this is a long ingress. This is a long way. This is great to see a real-time tack view. I am trying to include more, more tack view. So this, I thought, you know, being able to see this instead of just seeing something like this, I thought would be better. I think it's, it's more information-centric for you guys to be able to see a big tack view and small views of the cameras and stuff and we'll go back and forth like I can do this um, and I actually need to turn on turn on the tack views like we'll turn the tack views on which I probably should do now so we'll turn the tack views on here there we go so now you guys have tack view in all of the the small cameras and I'll try and keep it keep it centered but it's hard to hard to drive both hard to drive both But we'll get there. Hopefully. Now, Moltar has lost... I have lost a lot of my finesse in camera switching and stuff, so it's... We'll just have to see how well I'm able to move back and forth between things, and 
I anticipate with this many Tomcats, regardless of how this match goes, that things are going to go very, very fast. There is one eagle. Let's see if we can grab him. There he is. So Black Arrow is rocking the eagle. Now we have seen, talking about Black Arrow, we have seen Black Arrow wreck face in the eagle. Coming in from really high, really fast, and people are just unable to get away from him. So Black Arrow is here. Now, will he be effective is the question. I don't know. There's been a couple matches where we've seen him not really do anything, and there's been one or two matches where he just goes off and obliterates the opposition. So which of those is going to show up? Not, not necessarily which is going to show up, because I don't think it's him being effective or not is necessarily his fault. I think it comes down to what type of team he's flying against and what his team is trying to do. Uh, I, don't, I can't really blame him for it. Something else that I was going to ask you guys. What, uh, so I was looking at the Monster Tech pit. The MTX, I think is what it is. Does anyone have any other suggestions for pits? I like the idea of an 80-20 pit. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm pretty hardcore into DCS, right? Uh, my setup previously was, and we'll t we're just going to talk about this while these guys are continuing to ingress. My setup previously was pretty ridiculous. I used garage shelving to, uh, uh, mount everything. I play on a 65-inch TV with touchscreens in front of me. I've got a real sim stick and a that I move between and a Thrustmaster stick. And then I've, yeah, I I live and breathe DCS. So now I've thought instead of having the same setup for streaming and for playing, I want to have a totally separate setup. I'll use the same PC, but a totally separate setup for my flight sim and I was looking at the monster tech MTX flight sim rig but but I having a little bit of difficulty getting hold of them so does anyone else have any other suggestions have you ever tried sim shakers stuff yeah I have butt kickers and stuff and I've got a, a jet seat that I use if that's what you're talking about I have too much money uh, it's it's a labor of love. This is not something that happens overnight. It's just something that happens, you know, as progress. And I sell a lot of the stuff that I don't use. So just be aware that that is a big part of it. I recycle money. I don't just let old hardware sit there. I like to recycle things. We're riding along with a Phoenix. Not sure who this is coming in on. It's on camera one. We're going to zoom in here on the tack view. Looks like it's on Black Arrow, so we've got Black Arrow in camera too. And the AIM-54 is having its customary aneurysm. Black Arrow looks like he's getting the missile warning. Let's go to split screen and blow these views up a little bit. Missile is... Grab Black Arrow. Can we see the missile yet? It's going to be above him. He's split essing away. It's still 10 miles away. Yeah, that missile's trashed. That missile's done for. That thing's not going to not going to get anybody. But back to the pit, since these guys are. What's not working? Betting? That's on Jester. I don't. I haven't done anything with that. Yeah, I don't know. Silver Phoenix. That is a good point. He was in a 15, force cold down to under 30k. Valid point. That is a very valid point. We talked about this a little bit last cast. That not all the missiles are meant to kill. Sometimes you just want to cause somebody to do something. And in this case, get Black Arrow down from space into a more manageable altitude. 
Now, if I were Fuji or whoever launched that Phoenix, I probably would have waited a bit longer to launch on the Black Arrow to get him into more a nigh undefendable position to where he wasn't going to be able to out energy that missile. Hero, I don't know that they wasted it. We just I just said that maybe they were trying to just get Black Arrow to turn around. Maybe. Maybe. A couple more Phoenix getting launched. We are going to try and grab them. And the first one is on... Looks like it's on Shark. So here it comes. There goes the aneurysm. Missile doesn't... No, it's not on Shark. Missile doesn't know what it wants to do. Let's see where the other one is. So it actually looks like it's on Falcon. A lot of these Phoenix, ladies and gentlemen, are just... Not doing well. I think they're launched from too far away. And I have to give Phoenix Task Force a big time amount of credit that they are defending... Very, very well. Very, very well. And this is a better shot. I like this shot. This shot from 24 miles from Sheik, from 35,000 feet, that's got that's got some, some potential, right? That has some potential all over it. And I think it's coming in on Challenger here. So we're in split screen. Here's Challenger's view. I don't think he sees this missile yet. He's now getting the missile warning. There's the missile. Four and a half miles away. It is closing fast. 1,700 knots, two miles away. Challenger's in a world of trouble. I don't think he gets away from this. And boom, telephone pole on to Challenger. He loses both of his wings and says, Mom, maybe if I get rid of my drop tanks, I'll be able to fly again. But no, that, that's not how this works at all. And he gets taken down, and Challenger is the first casualty of this matchup. And he is going to go headlong into the ground. Boom! Challenger, first man down, and Phoenix Task Force is up. Six men remaining to five. Look at all those 120s. Look at that. What is that? Black Arrow was just, have all the things. Looks like this is B weapon restriction. So it's Mark 47s, not Mark 60s. So they're going to have to get even closer to make these Phoenix uh, work. Why does Sheik not, Sheik doesn't have a canopy? Oh. 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 What is this? Is this the new meta? Anyway, that, that's interesting. That is interesting. Another 54 being launched by Sheik. Mark 47. Oh, 54 coming on to Black Arrow. Is he going to be able to get away from this? Let's take a look at his view. Where is it? There it is. Three miles away. Black Arrow is over Mach 1. Is it going to catch him? Let's take a look. No, that missile's trashed. That missile is donezo. He is not going to be able to get... That missile's not going to be able to catch him. So not worried about it. Not worried about it at all. And this is the AIM-54 that Sheik launched. It's tracing Fuji. It's at Mach 2.5, but it is decelerating rapidly. Rapidly. So don't, don't think that's going to have potential either. And Black Arrow has also recognized that this Phoenix is trashed. He doesn't need to worry about this. Predator did the same up here to the north with the Phoenix that's chasing him. But look how aggressive Black Arrow is being. Look how aggressive he is. Phoenix launched from Gripen. I think that's going to be on Black Arrow. Black Arrow coming head on to Fuji. Fuji recognizing that he may be in some trouble. Let's grab that Phoenix that Fuji launch or Gripen launched. So here it is. Here's the Phoenix that Gripen launched coming in on Black Arrow. Black Arrow, I think, has recognized that he's got some type of imminent threat coming in on him. Phoenix is four miles away and still tracking. I don't see how far away it is. Oh, he's recommitting. But I think it's out of energy. So Black Arrow is doing a phenomenal job recognizing that these missiles don't have any energy left. Oh, he's defending now. So did the missile pick him back up? Oh, yes, it did. 
So the AIM-54 has picked him back up. He didn't recognize that the missile was out of energy. He uh, just wasn't, I guess, getting a, a warning from it. But now he is, and he's broken away. But good job recognizing, hey, I've got a warning. I need to probably make something happen because I'm unsure of how far away this threat is. Here's another look at the overarching battle space. Black Arrow and Fuji, I think, are the engagement to watch down here to the south. Everybody else is cold away from each other. Gunslinger launching a Mark 47 out. But again, this is the engagement to watch. Black Arrow against Fuji. Come on now. Give it to me. Give it to me. They're seven miles away. Here's Fuji's perspective. There's Black Arrow above him. There's Fuji down below. Let's go to split screen so you guys have a better view of this. So Black Arrow is flying directly over top of Fuji. Right over him. Does he know he's there? Not yet. There goes an AIM-54 from Fuji. I think that's on the lead. And Black Arrow, I think, has recognized now that he's directly over top one of his adversaries. Diving now onto Fuji. Is he going to be able to find him? Probably in vertical scan. There goes a 120 from inside three miles. And Fuji is in a world of trouble. You can see the contrail being made by that 120. Here comes an AIM-9. And Fuji gets hit. The AIM-9 is going to hit him too. And that's just for good measure. And Fuji's out of it. And we're down to four pilots remaining for Phoenix Task Force. And let's pause this and take, take some stock into what's going on and what we have remaining here. So Black Arrow able to capitalize on Fuji, getting himself in deep. Black Arrow flew directly over top Fuji, didn't see him there. Fuji launched onto Ali, I think saw the missile or Ali saw it and called it out and gave Black Arrow the essay that he needed to find him. But look how aggressive Predator Ali and Black Arrow are being. We can throw Sheik into that mix here too, uh, against the Golden Crown side. So we have two cold for Golden Crown, two hot for Golden Crown. So Dave and Grippen are cold. Rhino and Gunslinger are both hot. Uh, does Rhino see Predator? There is a significant amount of altitude separation between the two from Golden Crown and Predator for Phoenix Task Force. And then down here in the south, we have a head-on incursion between Gunslinger and Ali. So both of these engagements, I think, are things that we need to watch. So I'm going to set up the cameras here. We're going to take a look at Predator, the northern engagement here. So this is Predator's aircraft. And then Dave is going to be on camera two right here, who I think Predator is, is locked onto. And then three is going to be, who is three going to be? Three is going to be Guns, no, three is going to be Ali. Ali, so here's Ali's aircraft. And then four is going to be Gunsling. Okay. So here's this engagement. We have two engagements going on. Let's go back to TAC view so you guys can see it. Predator and Dave up to the north, possibly Rhino, and then Ali and Gunslinger down here to the south. So let's see how this is going to go. We're going to hit play and watch the action unfold. Here we go. So Ali coming head to head against Gunslinger. Predator trying to chase down Dave. I saw a missile come off from someone. It was from Ali. Let's go to quad view so we can see it a bit better. And Gunslinger is having a problem. Here come the 120s behind him. And he is, I think, going to eat it. No, maybe. No, he's able to get away from it. And now Dave, where's Dave? Dave is on camera two. Dave has multiple missiles coming in on him. Where are they? Where are they? Are we going to see him? We're spinning in circles. Dave, no! And Dave gets taken down. So now we need to look at Gunslinger's camera, and Gunslinger is taken down. So Dave and Gunslinger both go down, and let's again take stock in the current situation here. So Dave and Gunslinger get taken down for Phoenix, or sorry, for Golden Crown, and now it is a one, two, three, four, five, 
6v2. Not a place you want to be in if you are Golden Crown. However, Ali, I think, is in a bit of trouble after taking down his adversary as Griffin has recommitted is in, and is in a pretty good firing position against Ali. So let's flip over and look at that engagement right now. So here's Griffin. Griffin doesn't have Ali in his sights yet. Right here. Can we get him? There's that one. There's that one. So we are looking at their engagement. We've got Griffin on the left, Ali on the right. Let's hit play and see how this is gonna, gonna shake out. And actually, I think we need to pause here again. Sorry, I'm just making sure we cover all of our bases. Oh, oh, just making sure we cover everything. So Griffin and Ali are down here. Just making sure I don't miss anything. It's our timestamp. Okay, here we go. Sorry, guys. We're just making sure we don't miss anything. So Griffin and Ali are now coming in head-to-head. -head. The question is, do either of them see one another? Griffin's nose just went right through Ali, and he doesn't see him. Doesn't see him. That is catastrophic for their side. Rhino now, meanwhile, launching an AIM-54. Check that out. He's launched an AIM-54 up. Let's go back to the tack view so you guys can see everything that's going on. Predator and Ali are right on top of each other. Rhino has launched that AIM-54. I'm not sure who that's on yet. Another AIM-54 coming in on Black Arrow. And Black Arrow, I think, is defending a bit too late. And he flies into the ground. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. So defended, then defended a bit too aggressively. And the trees claimed, the trees in the ground have claimed another victim. And jumping back to the tack view, now we've got Predator coming in on Grippen. So Grippen was able to cause Black Arrow to fly into the ground. Oh, ground is another emote that we need. But Grippen was able to cause Predator, or Black Arrow, to fly into the ground. But has at the same time given himself up, I think, to Predator. And we are going to grab that missile right there. And there is Grippen. So there is Grippen. And let's hit play and see how this one's going to go. Here comes the missile, and Grippen's going to eat it right into the face. And Grippen gets taken down as his plane loses its wings and its vertical stabilizers. And he is the latest casualty for Golden Crown. So Golden Crown has one pilot remaining, while Phoenix Task Force has five. Five pilots remaining. And Rhino is the only one left. Only one left. And I think we need to watch this defensive maneuvering coming from... Sorry, camera's got a little bit out of whack. I gotta fix them. Okay, that one's fixed. Just equalizing my cameras, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so now, now, we have Rhino, the only one left for Golden Crown, hot on the heels of Ali. So let's flip and find Ali. Whoop, just passed him. So let's find Ali. Ali is right here, defending. For his life, running, trying to get away. Where is Rhino's aircraft? There is Rhino's aircraft. Rhino shooting all the things, but I don't think he's. Oh, the oh oh dear, oh dear, that is a Phoenix. Point two miles, but I don't think it's going to catch him. It's at Mach point seven four. So Ali has done a wonderful job in getting away from these incoming threats. And Rhino, if we take a look at his aircraft, is down to aim nines only. He's got three aim nines. He needs to get rid of those tanks. But he's got three aim nines remaining. Three aim nines. Okay? So we're going to watch this from split screen so that we can see how this unfolds. But Ali able to get away from that Mark 47. Predator thinking about recommitting. Rhino is tunnel visioned onto Ali. Predator, if we go back to the main view, is coming in onto 
Rhino, I think, to try and save his wingman's butt. But does he see him? I don't think he sees him. So here's the split screen again between Ali and Rhino. And Predator just doesn't see. Just doesn't see Rhino. So going back to the tack fuse, you guys can see. Predator just doesn't see him. He needs to recommit in here to try and save Ali. But Pre Rhino is able to cut down the angles. Here comes an aim nine. Oh, Rhino. Two and a half mile aim nine? No, sir. Rhea, I don't think that's going to work at all. Split screen to see if it's going to work. 0.9 miles back there. It's not going to catch him. It's already out of juice. Not going to work at all. But now we've got a 120 coming in from the right side of the screen. And Falcon is beelining. Just balls to the wall coming in here to try and save his comrade. And here's Falcon's point of view coming, coming in on Rhino. Lots of missiles coming in on Rhino. Let's jump to Rhino's point of view to see if we can see some stuff. Where is everything? There is a lot of stuff. Look at all of that. That is fire all the things coming in at Rhino. Just missiles and planes everywhere. Zoom out here so you guys can get a bit better view on TAC view. Shark, Falcon, Predator, and Ali have all recommitted onto Rhino, and I don't think Rhino is going to be able to get away from this at all. Falcon is leading the way. There goes the 120 from Falcon. You can see it coming in from Falcon's aircraft right there, and if we jump back to Rhino's aircraft, it is now two miles away, half mile away, and this is it for Rhino. As it comes in and plows into the rear side of his aircraft, and Rhino is now horizontal stabilizer list. But still flying. Looks like a transformer now. But that second missile just gets rid of everything else on his aircraft. And he is done. Phoenix Task Force commandingly takes this round with five pilots remaining. Rhino tried to make some stuff happen, but it didn't matter. 1v5. There's not much you can do in that situation. And I got to point out, Sheik may be on the new meta. Canopyless. It's just better to hear other aircraft, right? Better SA. Hear all the sounds. Hear those Tomcat jet engines in all their glory. Then wind noise. I mean, maybe wind noise gives you an advantage. I don't know. 1v4 and a half because no canopy? Maybe. I don't know why he doesn't have a canopy. That's really interesting. Bullet rated with 22. Sorry for missing that. Thank you, brother. Much appreciated. That was 15 minutes ago, but bullet, much appreciated. Kerr dead came in with the prime sub. Thank you. Thank you. These guys have a little bit of a, a jaunt to RTB. They got a ways. A ways to go. So let's see if I missed anything else. No, we didn't miss anything else. We're going to fast forward because I don't want to wait 45 minutes to RTB here. But guys, what do you think? How'd that round go? The AIM-9 is useless on a cold target out. It definitely is, Chopstick. Unless they're slow. Unless they're slow. On a fast, cold target, not going to happen. But if they're slow, yeah, it'll catch them for sure. Match brought to you by Raytheon Missile Systems. <laughs> I think most of these matches are brought to you by Raytheon. But Diagnosis brings up, points out that he was already super low and super fast. So the lower you are, the more, the thicker the air is that the missile has to go through, and the less dense the air is. Or sorry, the more dense the air is. Sorry. My brain was going a different direction, and I realized I was wrong. So I said something wrong. It didn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> the AIM-9 doesn't have a lot of fuel to burn. Uh, it's not a... Yeah, it doesn't. So it can't reach out and touch him. It's, it's a baby missile. And when you compare it to something like the Phoenix that has all the fuel, it's just can't catch him. And air thickness, as Bullet says, is a huge factor. And that wasn't the thing that I thought was going to be wrong. 
it was air density allowing the, the missile to to have higher efficiency because of its motor but the the missile uses solid rocket fuel and doesn't actually intake any air for the combustion of the fuel so that didn't make any sense uh, so that's why it didn't say it. <laughs> 500 pounds of propellant for the AIM-54. Well, the AIM-54 is like 15 feet long. It is a massive missile. That's why we call it the telephone pole. I mean, the AIM-9 is purely capable of getting those seven and eight mile kills, but the target's gotta be head on and it can't really maneuver because the, the missile's just gonna be jogging. He's just gonna be jogging, just jogging in for the kill. And if the guy maneuvers at all, it's not gonna work. Not gonna work. The poor man's poor man's ET. I mean, the AIM-9 probably costs more than the ET, so I can't really say that. That doesn't really work. Bullet threw three pennies at me on stage. Much appreciated. Making it hail. These guys look like they're almost home. For anybody that's new to Saytel, one of the rules in Saytel is you have to RTB. You got to be able to make it back to base. TFS81 says, could we have the upcoming matches announced at the end of today's stream? Would like to know. Yeah, I will. I try and do that at the end of every stream. Diagnosis, the AIM-9X is a bad mofo. It definitely is, but it's got the same range limitation as, or close to the same range limitation as the, uh, the AIM-9M. And that's because it needs to be lighter. You don't want to have a heavy missile. And look at how slow the AIM-54 is to accelerate. Yeah, the AIM-9X is banned in Sato. This is true. Yes, the AIM-9X is banned in Sato. And the weapon restrictions, like today is the B weapon restriction, so the 120C is banned, the Mark 60 is banned. And you can only carry a limit of six AIM-120s maximum per aircraft and four AIM-54s per aircraft. It's just a... We're trying, this is competitive play. Some people will say, well, d don't balance. Well, this isn't real war. This is competitive play, and we're trying to make things balanced as well as we can. Uh, it's just different. So it's what we've, what we've tried to do. Something we've tried to do, and it's worked out fairly well. I, I have personally liked the weapon restriction variations between A and B that we've had this year. I haven't heard really any negative stuff from the teams. And that should be the end. That's going to be the end. Okay, so these guys have put down. That gives us the end of round one. Golden crown. Man, oh, man. Sure neutered and declawed those Tomcats. That was a shmammering. Just boom. Boom, boom, boom. Really fast. Well, not really fast. I mean, it took 10 minutes. That's still pretty quick for a 300 mile engagement, 150 mile ingress, and fuel was a thing, and nobody ran out of fuel. No one ran out of fuel. That is huge. What they fling, I, what are they flying? You can't tell. So Phoenix Task Force was flying six F-14s. Golden Crown was flying four F-16s, one F-14, and one F-15. The record was two minutes. I think the record was actually less than two minutes. Uh, if I, I think the fastest we've ever done, maybe that was, I, I think I'm talking out my ass. I don't know. TFS81, you're probably right. You're probably right. But I'm going to send you guys back to the Thrustmaster Supercut. Enjoy it. Alpha Whiskey always does a phenomenal job with these things. We will be back with round two. You'll probably see the Be Right back screen for a little bit as I get the track set up because it's just part of the deal. I got to get things set up. Um, but got to get things set up for round two. Will Phoenix Task Force be able to bring it back here in this all-important round two? Or is Golden Crown... Or sorry, I had that backwards. Will Golden Crown be able to bring it back in this all-important round two? Or will Phoenix Task Force close it out? Got to wait and see. See you guys in the next round.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Something I do need to point out, there was a new feature put into Saital at the end of October, and it was a timer. And what that timer did is it counted down once the server was loaded from 20 minutes. And once it expired, teams were free to take off whether the other team was ready or not. So that's why Phoenix Task Force, I'm assuming, is in the air, and Golden Crown is not. Um, we were having problems with teams taking too long, so we put this timer in place. And it's just, you know, I understand that some teams have problems with this, but um, it was some teams were taking, you know, an hour to get ready for a round, and it wasn't really fair. So Phoenix Task Force took off. Doesn't look like Golden Crown is quite ready yet, uh, but that is that is what's going on and why there is a differentiation between Phoenix Task Force being in the air and Golden Crown not being in the air. So just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of what is going on. Okay. Well, it actually looks like only two of the... Wait. Wait. Oh, no. Oh, no. My, maybe it's not. Maybe it's because my cameras are all messed up. Oh, no. That's probably why. Multar is spitting nonsense. Hold on. I got to fix my cameras because I'm a terrible person. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Why? Why do I do this to myself? I'm a terrible person. I mean, I'm not a terrible person, but, you know, you'd, you'd think I'd be able to manage four cameras by now. And I'm lying to you guys based on what's what's happening on the stream. They actually take off at the same time. For shame! Yeah, exactly. Let's fix this. There we go. Almost done. Okay. We are ready. We are hitting play. Here we go. Now we're all on track. The teams actually took off at the same time. <laughs> anyway, so they're rolling. They're rolling. Again, this is Novo against Mazdoc. 300 miles separating these teams. I'm a great person, Multar. Sometimes. You haven't met me yet. You might think I'm a terrible person. If you meet me, I would hope. All right, so these guys are ingressing. All important round two. Phoenix Task Force won round one convincingly. They only lost one, one pilot, and that was Black Arrow. Black Arrow got a bit too aggressive, took a no-no missile to the face, and he got touched in the no-no spot, and his plane blew up, which is not something you want to happen. So they only lost one combatant. Golden Crown lost everybody. They had six losses. Round two. It's an important one because if Golden Crown loses, they lose the match. Will they be able to come back? Will they be able to make something happen? Barf bar. I love that name. So is, is it like a bar of barf? Like, explain to me how you how you got that name. But saving up for a PC just to play DCS World, it is a pretty great sim. But don't go balls to the wall at the beginning just for DCS. Try and get something to get your feet in the water, dip your toe in, to make sure it's something you want to do before you stop dropping huge amounts of money. Because that's something I don't want anybody to this to happen to with anybody is for them to spend a ton of money on something they could have put towards something else and then DCS ends up not being what they thought it was going to be. Just 
Words of wisdom from Moltar. Didn't BA crash while defending? Oh yeah, he did. So the ground touched him in the no-no place. You're right, Positrons. I'm wrong, as usual. I'm always wrong. Will you ever do hello versus Hilo or slow mover? Oh, Hilo versus Hilo? Uh, there was an, a fight. I don't remember what it was called. Where I coined the MI-8 Stalin bus. And it was he helicopters on helicopters. So that's That's been a thing. I cast it for a while. Will I ever do something like that in Seitel? Probably not. Uh, I need to do some w World War II stuff, some WW2 stuff. Uh, I need to do some Korea stuff. Um, I'll probably start planning that stuff in the off season for Seitel after the finals. Yeah, Stalin Bus. MIA. It's the greatest name ever. But the Hilo fights are, are fun. They're kind of... SA is a lot more difficult in the Hilo fights because you don't have radars. You got to visually ID targets. Then you got to make sure they're not friendly. So I think in the past, it's it's a lot more hard. It's a lot more difficult to balance too because um, you're limited on air-to-air -air weapons and it's just, it's tough. It's really tough. Hilo BFM, best BFM. It can be. It makes for a good time. We did Huey versus Huey. It was a ton of fun. It is a lot of fun. It's really hard. Then you could be a pro and be one of the guys that shoots down fast movers with your side gunners. Elite PVG dropping the six bits. Much appreciated. Making it hail on stage. Silver, that is true. That is true. H, but we don't have an AH-64 here in game. I was referring to only the things that we have in the sim. Is it today Monday? I thought today was Monday. It is Monday. Am I missing something? Or are you referring to that I shouldn't be streaming today? But we are because I'm trying to get caught back up. Like your real A-10 flight? Or in DCS? Oh, okay. Like, damn, man. I'm surprised we're not hearing about, about that on the news. Did GC add an F-16 to their team? Uh, did they? I don't think so. I don't know who that is. No. They're all there. They're all in F-14s. Phoenix Task Force has had an F-14. Or F-16. They've had... Did I read that right? Yeah, they've had... Phoenix Task Force has had four. So... I don't know. I do not know that of which you refer to. Probably. I'm using... Speed Demon, I am using the skin pack, the Satel skin pack. So if you guys are missing a skin, it needs to go in the Seitel skin pack, but we're only limiting those to one livery per aircraft per team. Otherwise it gets really big and it's really difficult to manage. So uh, I think TFS 81's been the man behind, Banana's been the man behind doing the livery stuff. I think. Diagnosis D dropping 25 bits, much appreciated. Goes straight to the war chest to making the stream better. Yeah, Banana's doing it. Good. Glad I didn't screw that one up. Uh, uh, oh. I was just thinking about things that we did. Over the way. I put my cameras up on my house. So that was fun. My wife's like, why do we need cameras? And then I put them up. She's like, oh, this is cool. Because we can rewind and fast forward and see who's around our house. We get alerts for people coming in our driveway. And... We have a doorbell camera and all that stuff, so... It's like, I, I get it now. So I did that. Did I do anything else? 
No, not really. It snowed here over the weekend. So I had to break out the old snowblower, which is, it is an old snowblower. Sounds like a chainsaw when you turn it on. It's a snowblow the driveway. It's got a nice fuel leak, so I just, I run it until it runs out of gas. So it's not leaking gas in my garage. So I did that. Snow blew my driveway, my neighbor's driveway. And it was, Kansas has, we get the worst of everything. So we get snow, we get ice, it gets hot, it gets cold. Um, so it rained before it, before it snowed. So there was like an inch of ice underneath all the snow. So that was fun. So now we're waiting for all the ice to melt. But I had to snow blow the snow in order for the sun to hit the ice for it to be able to melt quicker. So that was that was a fun one to be able to run around on the driveway trying to get all the snow off, skating around on ice. That was a great time. So I did that. That was about my entire weekend. Did I go anywhere? Had to buy some Tapcon screws to fix some stuff in one of my rooms. For anybody that doesn't know, I'm heavily into home theater. And I have some massive subs. They're like 300 pounds a piece. And they were shaking. Um, they're in the wall. Like they're in kind of other rooms, back rooms. And they stick out into our theater. And they were shaking the one of the joists. So I had to Tapcon it into the foundation so it stopped shaking. And it was like vibrating. So I, I, that was, I've been chasing vibrations in that room. Finding all my recessed lighting is like vibrating and shaking when they get going. Planar type speakers, I have electrostatics. So they're kind of the same. All my speakers in that room are from a company, except, except the subs are from a company called Martin Logan, who their headquarters is like uh, 30 minutes from my house. So I've been doing a lot of that. Did some calibration and fun stuff. That's my other hobby. It used to be motorcycles, but I got hit by a delivery truck, so now I don't really leave the house. You have all mag pens. Mag pens are cool. I'd love to see a picture of your setup. I like mag pens. It's like a big board that produces audio. They don't have subs, so do you have dedicated subs? How does it work with low frequency? Sorry, I'm nerding out. These guys are continuing ingress separation between two teams. Probably what, 100 miles? 150 miles still. How many subs do you have? Just two? Or are you running four? Send me a picture of your setup. I'd like to see it. Two. Are they 12s? 15s? 18s? How big are they? What does GC need to do here? I think not isolate themselves, and they really need to contend with the aggression that Phoenix Task Force is bringing here. What's the point of flying long-range maps? Ah, uh, it's just a different game plan. Fuel economy. I just wanted to have the ability for teams to choose what they wanted to fly. So you should know this better than anyone, Banana. It's you can choose not to fly the long-range maps, right? It's just something different. I wanted to have the long-range ones, the short-range ones, the medium-range ones. Um, you just got to – just something different. That's all it is. Quick shout-out to, to Kano for the Prime Sub. Much appreciated. This is your first time. Thank you very much. Thank you for deciding to use that Prime Sub here. For anybody that doesn't know, if you have Amazon Prime, you can link it here, here to Twitch. You get a free sub. So you can – Subscribe to your favorite channel for free. How many 54s can the Tomcats carry? They can carry four. And it is Mark 47s in this one. 12s with 350 watt watt amps. Not bad. Cool. If you ever want to nerd out about audio or video, Silver Phoenix, send me a message. I'm always happy to nerd out about it. 
Seems like blue side has a lot better fuel management. Not necessarily. It depends on how they climbed, what their climb rate was, what their current fuel rate is. It just depends. You can't say, well, Phoenix Task Force is closer, so their fuel management probably wasn't as good. I mean, maybe, but it's really difficult to tell from from this point of view if it's if that's indeed what ended up transpiring. Yeah, Mago's, Mago's right. Did I say six? They, in Saital, they can carry four. It's because of balancing decisions. Um, now, whether or not we do that next year, I don't know, but it's just, we're trying things, right? It's, we're trying to make things balanced across all pla as many platforms as we can. Obviously, there's some that go put on the back burner. Dinos, <laughs> When all of your planes explode, that's bad fuel management. If you're dead, fuel management and fuel economy don't matter because it's zero. You're out of fuel. 100 miles between teams, 100 miles between Phoenix Task Force and Golden Crown now. Porto, what is this? Is that a real combat loadout that he's carrying? Gordo sent me a picture in in uh, Discord, dude. Is that real, or is that a like a show me loadout for showing us how badass we are? That is on one side of this F-15. There are eight missiles on one side. That means it carries 16 missiles into combat. 16. What? Why? The EX can carry up to 20? I guess they're just, are they utilizing them as missile boats for the F-35 and the F-22? Is that what they're doing? I mean, it makes sense. That's what I've always thought they were doing. Ali's turning away. Or... Oh, this is like way ahead. One of the cameras is way ahead, guys, so I just got to wait. Camera one is like two minutes ahead of everything else. So we're just waiting for everybody, all the other cameras to catch up here. Yeah, but if everybody's dead before you get to the BVR fight, Gordo, what does it matter? Now, .NET, the difference is missile performance. Helmet-mounted sight doesn't matter. Between the B and the C. And Hawk, this is round two. Oh, we did we lose somebody on GC? I think we have a disconnect on GC. They've only got five. Yeah, they've only got five pilots. So they are going to have an even more difficult time coming back here. That's going to be rough. Yeah, number one... Number camera one, I paused it because the camera's got to catch back up. Well, the easiest way to reduce your RCS in, in uh, DCS is if, you know, you die. Then you don't have an RCS because you're dead. 36 more seconds and we will be caught back up. AIM-54 launched from Grippen. Uh, don't know who that's on. Come on, camera, catch up. Sure, can do that. There you go. So 33 miles between Predator and Challenger. Ten seconds. Look at all the AIM-54s. And 
and go. Look at all them. Well, 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 there we go. So aim 54 is all over the place. 120 is being launched and then immediately unsupported by Predator and Black Arrow. God, there's just missiles everywhere. But 120B unsupported here. 120B, that looks like it was launched from Shark. That's still supported. This 120B was launched by Black Arrow. That one's unsupported. So no worry, I think, about either one of these missiles. They're just going to fly hard. Well, no, they picked them up. So Gunslinger's now defending. He should be okay, I think. How fast is that missile? Yeah, he's going to be able to outrun that one without too much of an issue. And these guys are not having any problems. Lots of missiles being launched, but nobody's getting in too deep. Well, I say that. Look how close that is. Is that on him? No, that missile's trash. So it was right next to him, but it wasn't actually actively tracking him. All these AIM-54s, but they're just out of juice. This one's Mach 1.7, that's trash. Mach 1.4, that's trash. Mach 0.9, trash. This one's going to be totally out of energy as it has an aneurysm. Mach 2, it's not close enough to be a factor against anyone. These 120s aren't any factor. Lots of long-range shots that aren't really doing anything. So Gunslinger was our man that disconnected for GC. He disconnected about five minutes ago. Aim 54, Mark 60 is the longest range missile, which is not in this round because they're using the B weapon restriction. Seagull, they are, it looks like they are shooting in panic or they're just trying to get their adversaries down from altitude. Uh, but these shots coming from these Tomcats at these ranges. I mean, this isn't a bad shot. 30 miles isn't bad, but we've seen really good defensive maneuvers coming from the uh, Phoenix Task Force side. So here's Falcon. He's who that AIM-54 is on, and I don't anticipate it being any, any type of a problem for him. Uh, it's how far away is it now? It's probably 10 miles. He hasn't gotten the missile warning yet. Can we see it? Should be off to his left. Mach 2.5 on the missile. He's got the missile warning now. There it is, five miles away. No point in dropping chaff this early. It's not really going to do anything. You're not knocking. It's not going to affect the missile. And he's just going to, I think, out-energy it. Yep. So it's down under Mach 0.5. He's in the dive. It's trying to catch him. Mile and a half away, and he's just going to outrun it. That thing's not going to be able to catch up to him. He's got the energy. Good defensive maneuvering by Phoenix Task Force's Falcon to be able to get out of the way of that incoming telephone pole. So well done really on both sides by, of defending everything that's gone on so far. But lots of AIM-54s. I mean, look at this. Two more being launched by Challenger and Rhino. I, I question how many they have left. Challenger has two left. He's already launched two. Rhino has, I guess it wasn't from Rhino, because he still has four. So I don't know who launched that one. But they're both on the same target. They both look like they're on Falcon. Falcon's recommitting 13,000 feet into two missiles that are both at Mach 1.5, co-altitude with him. So here's Falcon coming head on into missiles. They're five miles away. Maybe they're not on Falcon. Yeah, they are on Falcon. So the one... On his nose, is trying to pull lead pursuit. He gets the missile warning. He's now breaking away, and they're just going to be too slow. The bottom missile that is actively tracking him is at 0.5 Mach. It's done, and the top one that's actually on Predator isn't tracking anybody. Excuse me, anybody now. So, again, kudos to Phoenix Task Force for this marvelous job of defending these incoming Phoenix. Very well done. Did we lose somebody? No, he's down here. So still five pilots remaining for Golden Crown. Six for Phoenix Task Force.
AIM-54 being launched by Dave, immediately unsupported by it. In this patch, the AIM-54 still does have Magic INS. And sorry, I need to give you guys the tag view view back here. Uh, Fuji possibly getting in deep, maybe, against this three ship. We got a close isolated three ship between Sheik, Elite, and Shark up here to the north. And the secondary three ship more spread out. Predator, Falcon, and Black Arrow. Black Arrow is kind of running his own thing. Predator may be able to make something happen against Challenger coming in on the flank. They are separated by 16 miles, but Fuji is heavily isolated coming in against a three ship who are all hot. All of these guys are hot coming in against Fuji, and Fuji, I worry. Are you getting in too deep with a lack of situational awareness? Ooh, man. Ooh, man. I don't know. Fuji's getting in close. We're under 15 miles. Here comes an AIM-54 from Sheik. Don't see it yet. Let's try and grab it. Where is it? Can I get it? Can I get it? There it is. So here it comes. Split screen so we can ride along with it. Fuji's on left. AIM-54 launched on him. He responds with an AIM-54 of his own. Don't know who that's on yet, but this one is boogieing. 1,900 knots. And she is coming with some smash. Four miles away. Fuji gets pounded by some missile. We're going to pause to make sure we don't miss the missile that he launched. Where is it? Here it is. Um, and let's see if it's going to be able to run down its intended target. Boom. We'll actually go here and hit play now. So this is the missile. Looks like it's coming in onto Sheik, and it is... Eight and a half miles away. Fuji was the first casualty for everyone outside of the disconnect from Gunslinger. Missile is now five miles away, 1,600 knots. Is it tracking? No, this missile's trashed, so she's done. And now I think the person to watch is Ali coming in against Gripen. So Ali is head on against Gripen, but Ali's got a longer range. Sorry, Gripen's got the bigger stick in the AIM-54, and Ali's not doing anything six miles at 18,000 feet. He's got to make something happen, but he's not. It's too late, and telephone pole, I think, to the face? No. He vertical notches it. Great defensive maneuvering by Ali. Well, well done on him to make something happen. But now we need to watch Gripen as it ingresses against against Ali here. So here's Ali defending, trying to run away from Gripen. And there's Gripen five miles away, and Ali is turning in front of him, allowing Gripen to close the distance. But Gripen has no AIM-54s left. There goes something. I don't think it's on Gripen. AIM-9 now coming from Gripen onto Ali. Ali doesn't see it coming. No flares, and he gets smashed. Pause now to get take stock into what's going on. So we need to take a view into where everybody is. We've got Shark coming in against Challenger and Gripen. Sheik is way back here. Predator is in the mix with Rhino, and Black Arrow's head-to-head -head against Rhino, and Falcon's just kind of supporting everybody. So I think the engagement to watch now is Rhino and Black Arrow. And Rhino is just putting an AIM-54, I think, onto Black Arrow. And that is from that is from 13 miles. And then Shark is coming up here to the north. So let me try and get cameras in order so we can watch this stuff so camera one is going to be on black arrow so there's camera one camera two is going to be rhino who has just launched a missile where is it so there's an aim 54 being launched from rhino and you can actually see give you guys a split view so you can actually see black arrows cons out there in the distance um no, that, that's not a missile behind Predator in camera four. That's actually his contrails. It's not a missile, Shifty. That's his contrails, and he broke contrails, so they stopped. But AIM-54 from Rhino, you can see Black Arrow's contrails out there. And then Shark and Gripen, I think, are the ones we want to watch up to the north. 
So here's Shark's view on camera three, and then Grippin is going to be on camera four. So Grippin is right here. We're gonna get him on camera four. So let's hit play and see how this is all gonna shake out. Black Arrow puts a aim 120, so we need to go to split screen down here to the south between Black Arrow and Predator, or sorry, and Rhino. And I think the AIM-54 is the one to watch. So here's the AIM-54. He's actually going to run that one into the ground. Great defensive flying by Black Arrow. And Rhino is actually getting run down by Predator. Here comes a 120 from Predator onto Rhino's upper left side. And I don't know that Rhino knows this is coming. 1,000 knots on this 120B. He's turning right into it, allowing the missile to close. Oh, no. Rhino. Oh, he line of sighted it. Okay, so he got away from it. But... Predator launches another one, and this, I think, is going to be the kill shot as he had to defend the first one, and this one is going to fly right through his canopy, and Rhino gets taken down. Pausing this to make sure we don't miss any of the action up north. Dave is recommitted against Predator, but look at this here up to the north as Shark and Grippin are getting in it. So Shark and Grippin are on the right side of this engagement. Let me see if I can get their F. So there is... Grippin on his nose, and let's get, there we go. Okay, so top view is Shark and Grippin. And I'm actually going to bring Challenger into this. Challenger's too far away. All right, so here's Challenger, and where is Grippin? So there is Shark and Grippin, right off his left wing, okay? So there's the engagement. Challenger's recommitting in to help Grippin his teammate uh, trying to make something happen. And I need to move down here to make sure. Uh, we need to watch Dave. So Dave, Rhino got taken down. Dave has recommitted into the Southern engagement. And here's his view. All right, so let's hit play. See how this is gonna shake out. Shark is chasing Grippin and Challenger. We can see the missile coming from, actually let's watch this from Challenger's point of view here. So here's Challenger ingressing on the side of this engagement. We can see the missile coming from Shark onto Grippin. It's a 120, but I think it's gonna out be outrun by Grippin. It actually got run to the ground. And here is Challenger coming in onto the six of Shark. There goes an aim nine. I think that's an aim nine from two miles. That's not a bad shot because Shark's coming across and Shark gets hit. Great support from Challenger. And let's pause again to make sure we don't miss anything down to the south because we need to take a look at Dave. Dave has recommitted into the head of a three ship. So Dave is head to head with Falcon. Sorry, wrong camera. Dave is head to head with Falcon down here, right here. Here's Dave and Falcon. And then we have Black Arrow who is coming in to help Falcon. Okay, so we need to grab some other cameras as this fight unfolds. Here is Black Arrow on camera one. And then camera two, we are moving to Dave. So there's Dave on camera two. We're actually going to watch this from, I think, Dave's perspective. All right. And I am going to grab this to see if we get anything. And here we go. So we're pushing play. Here we go. Dave is the one ingressing. Dave is in full mill power. Crap, that's paused. Full mill power is now he's defending against an incoming 120. Where is it? Where is it? It's on his left. Where is it? Where is it? There it is! Holy crap! That thing got close! Oh, it hit him. It was just a little bit of desync. It hit him. Okay, so he does end up getting taken down. That is unfortunate. Missile impacts his aircraft and his engines go down. But here comes the second 120 and it is going to fly directly through his aircraft. And Dave is the latest casualty. And now we have two remaining aircraft. Two lone survivors for the GC side. Let's take a look at TAC view so you guys can see what's going on. Challenger and Grippen are the two remaining guys for GC. Here's Challenger. Let's grab Grippin. Here's Grippin and their F-14s. 
F14 view, F14 view. And they are coming down to this two ship. They're leaving Sheik, but they don't have very good at situational awareness because there is no AWACS. So remember, no AWACS, they're lacking situational awareness. And that camera is paused. That should not be paused. So they're coming head to head against Black Arrow. And I think Black Arrow is the man that we need to watch as the Mr. Aggressive, Mr. Aggressive himself is coming in here and he's on camera three. So here's Black Arrow. Let me try and give you guys a better view of what's going on in TAC view. Black Arrow is leading the way up here in TAC view, head on against Challenger. 120 being launched from Black Arrow. He breaks away. And Challenger is on the right. Let's grab the missile camera. Or Challenger's on the left. Let's grab the missile camera on the right. Here it is, split screen. Challenger not defending yet. Here it comes against Challenger. Is it going to be able to catch him? It's going to be close. No, he broke away from it. Great defensive flying by Challenger. Did it hit him? No, that was the missile hitting the ground. But the second one, I don't know that he gets away from this one. Here it comes, Mach 2. Let's go to Challenger's view, and it is two miles away, Mach 1.5, and I think he's going to do a great job of bleeding this one out of energy, and now it's Gripen that's coming in. So Challenger able to defend those incoming threats. Now it's Gripen coming in on the right, trying to make something happen, and he's head-to-head -head with Black Arrow. So Black Arrow is finding everybody. Black Arrow now flaring against a possible incoming threat from Gripen, but Falcon pushes Gripen away. Oh, but up here to the north, Challenger gets smashed by a 120. So Sh Challenger gets taken down, and now Gripen is the lone man. Gripen is the only guy left. Allow attack for you to track the, the aircraft. So Gripen is running from Falcon. And here is Falcon. So we'll go to split screen so you guys can hear it. See it. Challenger on the right. Or sorry, Gripen on the right. Falcon on the left. Falcon is in pursuit. He's over Mach 1. 200 knots closure onto Gripen. 120 coming from three miles onto a cold contact. If Gripen is able to out energy that, it may not hit him, but he's not. Half mile. That's going to be a face mile. Up the tailpipe. And Gripen is the last casualty for the GC side. And Phoenix Task Force, again, not quite as commandingly as round one, takes this one and solidifies their victory in this match. Two rounds to nil, as long as they're able to put it down in the airfield back at their takeoff point. Carbon dropped 100 bits. Thank you very much. Chicano came in with the prime sub. Maybe I already got you, but thank you very much. I think I already got you. Thank you very much. So, guys, what a round. Tomcat's able to make a bit more happen there. Got two kills instead of just one. But I think the biggest issue there was weapons management. We saw so many Tomcats not having any weapons remaining at the end of those rounds, and they were forced to go into closure and get AIM-9 kills, which is not a place you want to be in. It's not something you want to be doing. You want to use those long boomsticks, but when you're forcing yourself or utilizing those weapons too early in not high KPK situations, you're just digging yourself a hole that you gotta climb out of at the end. Mago, I think F-14s can work. I think the biggest issue was they were taking those AIM-54 shots from a long way away. Long way away. But I don't think any of these guys are gonna have any issues RTBing. Let's see how far away they have to go. Here's Novo. I guess most of that fight actually took place on their side. So 140 miles. Don't anticipate this being any problem. A lot of these guys are still over 90% engine RPM. And if you fly these planes right, they have some serious endurance to be able to make it home. Go Hamo. They did. They flew right into where the F-16 excels. 
They didn't keep in that medium range where the F-14 does really well. They went right into where the F-16 flies, and that's not something you want to do. And I think, I got to say, the F-16, I think, had better situational awareness with PPLI. I do have to say that. I think that was a, a factor we weren't, we didn't give enough credit to during that match. Hopefully my camera work wasn't too bad. Hopefully you guys enjoy the active pauses. I think it allows us to not miss any of the action. Um, I'm trying to set up engagements as they take place. We review them a little bit in tack view before they go, where everybody is. And I hope that that gives you guys a better picture of how the battlefield is actually taking shape and how things are progressing instead of just seeing people die. I mean, seeing people blow up is cool, but I want to be able to portray what is actually taking place um, during these fights. So hopefully that's giving you guys some, some insight. Sheik is now 75 miles away. So let's grab his aircraft. Here is Sheik. And we are in times for acceleration to make it back. Map views can be a little more zoomed out. Okay. I'll remember that. Well, I got to fix real-time telemetry so you guys can drive drone tack view. But how many more rounds? We are done. So it's best two out of three. If GC would have won, we would have been going to round three. But that's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow at 1600 Zulu. But only one round, one match a day. I, I burn out. I can't, my brain can't do, do more than that. I, I run out of, run out of stamina. Oh, we can talk about that real quick. Let's do that. Let's talk about what matches are coming up and what you guys need to have to get excited about. Let me pull up the schedule. Did you skip any matches? I have not skipped any matches, I don't think. Okay, so match for tomorrow is going to be Dragon Squadron against ECV-56. Is going to be Tuesday or tomorrow. Wednesday will be 36th Stormo against 64th. Thursday, Toro Squadron against Taw. Friday will be Phoenix Task Force against Taw. And I think that'll be it. And then we'll come back again on Monday. So again, tomorrow, Tuesday is going to be 36th. No, sorry, Dragon Squadron taking on ECB 56. And then Wednesday, 36th against 64th. Thursday, Toro Squadron against Taw. And Friday will be Griffin Squadron. No, Phoenix Task Force taking on Taw. I did skip TFS 81 against my squadron. I did? Are you sure? Well, if that's the case, that match will be tomorrow. I guess we'll be doing that tomorrow. So tomorrow will be tactical TFS 81 against my squadron. That'll be tomorrow's. And then Wednesday will be 36 against 64. Falcon coming in for a little bit off axis landing. One of the guys is already put down, so this match is over. We're just watching Falcon put down, and then probably Predator, and then we'll call it. Maybe Shakers versus Tall. Oh, maybe I skipped those. So we'll go back and get those. But tomorrow will be TFS 81 against my squadron. We'll catch that. And then I, I guess I skipped Baby Shakers against Tall. And I don't know if I did Dragon Squadron against Harpier or not. don't know but we'll go back and get those anyway guys these guys have put down on the airfield so that is it for today hopefully you guys enjoyed it we had 
around 170 people in today, so that's good. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the new stops and the active pauses and stuff like that. I am. It makes it easier for me to cast. But tomorrow, again, is going to be TFS81 taking on my squadron 1600 Zulu. Be sure to be watching for that super cut that will drop right before the match. Sponsored by Thrustmaster. So huge shout outs to all of our, our sponsors. Fox Mounts, TacView. Eagle Dynamics, of course. Black Hog, Thrustmaster. Heat Blur. Buddy Fox and Wild Weasel Apparel. Uh, if you guys have any need for... What am I looking for? Combat Aviation Apparel, check out Wild Weasel Apparel's website. Anything you guys buy that is DCS World centric goes back into making this stream better because I get a little a little cut. Fix tack view, end of stream reminder. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you for reminding me, Silver Phoenix. That is a huge, huge benefit. And if I'm going to be putting in an order for emotes. So if you guys have any suggestions on emotes, please send me a message. I need to do the ground. The ground is a good one. Telephone pole. Uh, some type of something. I don't know. In the face. That's a good one. Crayons? Crayons. Best stick mounts? Box mounts. Yeah. Come on. Notch. Notch is a good one. But how would you do that? Pants down. Yes. Yes. That's a good one. All right. I'll have to go back and look at chat to catch these stuff. But guys, that's going to be all she wrote for me. I'm going to send you out with the Thrustmaster Supercut, and I will see you guys back here tomorrow. TFS81 taking on my squadron. Have a good one. Fly safe in those virtual skies, and I'll see you guys later.